All right. I believe I have everyone's attendance recorded properly. Please let me know. Ah, Johnny and Thomas. Okay. Um, we have a link to the previous minutes. Let me give this in case anyone needs it to follow along. I was trying to open the agenda, but the CAPTCHA for HackMB is failing me. All right. I just put the um, link to the HackMD in the chat channel. Um, okay. So basically, I made this agenda based on last month's agenda for the most part. Um, I missed most of that meeting because I was at, at Open Info Summit and joined at the end. Um, but I did want to start off with CentOS Connect at Fedora Flock. Um, which we've kind of been discussing in the background while we were working on getting the recording going. Um, so this will be August 2nd through the 4th in Cork, Ireland. Um, the link in the agenda goes to the main page. From there, you can get the registration page. The hotel block is full. Um, if you do not have a room, you will need to book directly or through your company's travel or however you'd like to look, um, we cannot get that extended out any farther than it already has been. Um, the agenda is up on SCED, so you can see who is speaking, when they're speaking. Um, from what I saw and, and went through the schedule the other day, um, it looks like we're going to have some really good talks, a nice range of talks, which is nice. Um, and we will, so CentOS Connect will be one of the conference. Fedora Flock will be going all three days of the conference. And there will be a mentoring summit on Friday, I believe, which is for Fedora, but mentoring is good for everybody. So if anyone's interested in mentoring, that's where my talk is over at mentoring. Um, so please. If you can get there, attend. I think it'll be a good time. Um, I know they're still working on the sponsorships. I don't think anybody but Red Hat is on the um, page yet, but there are several sponsorships in the background. Can we get a direct? Yeah. I did send that out this morning to the CentOS lists, but hang on, let me get that. I will get all the lists, all the links. Just give me one second, Bex. And we can put these in as well. So the first link is the Flock to Fedora link. The second link is to the registration. And the third link is to the SCED. Being that those links are kind of out of context, being that I've grabbed them out of the email. Catch up on the aha, Thomas is here. Okay. All from Kid went and slain. Direct links is good. No worries. Talk to, to fedora.org won't load for me. Yeah, it's loading for me. I think Bex is being funny. Uh, in this case, I wasn't. It did load soon later. I, for some reason, this computer has decided that all of the web needs a five minute delay, I guess, in case I am no longer angry and don't need to see that page or something. <laughs> I, I need to reboot it, but I have too many tabs. Yeah, I get it. I. I have a Firefox extension that saves all of my tabs that I make extensive use of. Oh, you need to share that with the audience. Um, does anyone else have any questions about Flock? Um, Sean is on PTO. I know he's probably been working on things behind the scenes like the schedule. There are CentOS related talks on the sched. Um, and I know Justin's been putting the rest of it together. So I know this, the total sked isn't completed. Um, all the planning isn't completed. Um, 
but I can answer any high level questions anyone has, um, such as it's cheaper to fly into Dublin and then take the train down. So, Maybe. Assuming you even have a flight to Cork. Cork is a very small airport. Yeah, there are flights from London and Bratislava. And apparently nice. Amsterdam. Or not Bratislava, sorry, London. I could and, get and routed Amsterdam. there, but it was like twice as much. I wound up taking the flight uh, New York, Amsterdam, uh, Cork, just because it was less stressful after what happened to me when I went to DevCom CZ. So I just decided I'm not going to bother with more stress. Well, I needed to end up in Dublin, so this worked out really well. So there will be some of us on a train on Monday if anyone's getting there in the morning and would like to train down with us, get in touch, um, and we'll work out whether we can all wait around and get on the same train. I'm still investigating train. Um, so from Les, are there is there anything else about Flock we want to discuss? Okay, then I will move on to our continuing discussions on what is success for stream. Okay, let me open that up. I'm not sure how far we got last month, which is why I put it on the schedule again for this month. It was a fairly quiet uh, chat last month. Um, yeah. Opening it up. See if there's anything we need on here. All right. So it looks like for the most part, we are good with the wording of things, which is at the top section, but we still have X, Y, and Z to fill out. Um, so increase the number of interactions by X. So basically participation. Um, what do people feel like a good increase in numbers would be? Well, it'd be nice to know what our current numbers are so that we know what feels reasonable. Um, Okay. If our current numbers are 10, increased by 50 feels pretty extreme. Right. If, if okay. Yeah, I, I suspect we can't really come up with numbers in the abstract that are going to be useful unless we actually have a way to measure these things and, like, see how they're going to move around, like, across time. Um, the other thing is that, like, hard metrics are kind of tricky because... Uh, they can lead to people optimizing for the metric, which isn't necessarily optimizing for the good thing that the metric is supposed to encourage. Uh, so that's something to be mindful of. Do we have ways to measure all of these things? That was some yeah. discussion that is in underneath on the original write-up from the first meeting we discussed this about how we could pull out metrics, like knowing that somebody is from a new company or a new individual has who has not contributed and when i and i think when we were talking about the interactions it's not that and this is why i don't think we can it can necessarily be gamified um you can always gamify it um but it's like hey we got three new people into the community if three is our number that's great and if even if they're drive-bys that's still an increase in interactions um it's not in the case where if some, somebody has 10 commits, they get a prize and then they do add a space or the, you know, well, I like to fix grammar and stuff, but, you know, they're not just going in and correcting a spelling mistake just to gamify in, in those cases, um, which was an issue when contributors in OPTEC would get a free pass to summit. So right before the deadline, everybody would like find a typo to fix. Um, so not so yes, we can gamify it because hey, we got five people to 
do one commit. The hope is, though, that they're not drive-by commits, that some of them will stick around. So those are the type of interactions we're really talking about. Um, and so, also, uh, helpful folks on the lists, if we can get, as our lists have been kind of quiet, but for a while there was a lot of good community support going on on the mailing lists, and that seems to have tapered, shall we say. Now, do we want to say, and I have no issue with this, do we, most likely the person to answer a question is already an active member of our community and therefore already interacting. Do we want to include those people who are asking their first questions? That works for me. As, okay. uh, I, people who are giving it a shot for the first time to see how we respond are members of the community. Okay, I, I agree. Um, so as do we want joining IRC or because we have attending meetings, which tend to be IRC. Um, inter we can do interacting, et cetera. Okay. Um, so one thing that I think came up in previous discussion, but that could be interesting looking at in this context is whether we can have something like the Fedora badges for Santos. Because badges in Fedora have been very popular and are, are quite helpful in encouraging people. Well, not necessarily encouraging people, but like giving people something for like their trouble and people really like badges. So it could be fun to have something like that deployed for Santos as well, tied to like Santos with the achievements, but I don't know what that would actually involve. I'm all for badges. Um, I'm a big believer in badges and collecting them all. Um, so that might be something that we track down the people who run Fedora badges while we're at clock. Yeah. And see how we can interact with them. David, I think you just buzzed and didn't actually say anything. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I would just said that that's... Uh... Again. <laughs> Don't say that word, whatever it was, because it, it just does it twice. It just did it a second I mean... time. Okay. okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, now I have to bump up the volume, though, because I don't have a thing. Like... Oh, there we go. Yeah, sorry, my, my doc is clearly dodgy. Uh, no, I was just saying this is probably a good discussion for Flock. I agree. So we can have that there uh, if the folks that work on badges are around. Okay. Um, Neil, I'm going to add your IRC thing to the bottom for any other business. Sure. And then you can provide more insight into that. Um, I don't want to take us off track to do it now. Um, all right, so we need more metrics to determine what X is. Um, and I'm going to say we need more metrics or at least data to know whether, how long it takes someone to get a PR reviewed. Um, some there groups may be- There's not a good answer for that. Yeah, and it's, and it's gonna be different for every SIG, I am sure, in every repo. Um, if we can find out like the average is three days and we can get it down to two days, I think that would be success, but without knowing the numbers. So I think on GitLab, you can actually get stats for these kind of things. Okay. So now yeah. that, uh, all the, all the Santos stuff is on Git, all the Santos stream stuff is on GitLab. A lot of the, not all of the SIG content is on GitLab, but a lot of SIGs are on GitLab. Um, It'd be useful to explore whether the necessary things in GitLab are enabled for getting this kind of information and then exposing it somewhere. From my time as a GitLab admin, my understanding is that um, GitLab uh, administrators have access to these metrics on a per project slash names on a per namespace level. Um, individual project admins obviously have um, these metrics on a project level, but because of the way the CentOS stream, the, sorry, Red Hat slash CentOS stream namespace is set up, I suspect there are very, very few people who actually have access to those metrics. 
uh, we need to chase down one of those people to tell us what it actually looks like and get a breakdown of like, when is it an MR that is coming from an external contributor versus one that's coming from a rel engineer and what's the lookup times between those because uh, I suspect that those numbers are going to be um, polar opposites uh, and, and we need to figure out how to bring those closer together. Yeah, and that's the whole point on this bullet point is to try to make it easier and friendlier for new contributors, non-Red Hat contributors to get their stuff looked at. Um, originally, this one was to be merged. We felt that reviewed was more realistic. Um, okay, so does... this, just to give you an idea, like I'm, I'm an administrator in both of the, uh, the, the places here. It's quite difficult to tell the difference between a Red Hat contributor versus a non-Red Hat contributor without some extra tooling and stuff. And, and that's so, fine. But there's some fine. there's some tools that we can put together, but um, but like knowing the difference, uh, that's that's going to take a little bit of of engineering work for us to do. Can can we just get stats based on like the domain of the email of the commit author? Like that's not going to be perfect because some people would use personal emails, but that will probably catch. The best yeah, so I guess. So that's the that work that needs to be done because it's not directly exposed in the existing metrics system that GitLab has. So we have to write something against the API that goes and looks through all of that stuff and you know all that stuff. So got it. Uh, that's that's why there's a little bit of extra work involved here. It's not directly exposed in the existing metrics that you might get in the the admin panels or something. Do we have a ticket for this somewhere, or should we have a ticket somewhere to follow this? We're we're gonna need a ticket. Brian, real quick while you're in there, does it? Sh do you have enough data not separating separating out where somebody works, but how long of an average it's taking to get a first review? Um, we can probably put something together. Okay. Um, I think that's and you know that's going to be another piece of work about how to sort of get the statistics right because. The, the the vast majority of the work happening in the Red Hat uh, namespaces, for example, is going to be uh, like RHEL maintainer work. So RHEL maintainers are viewing other RHEL maintainer uh, requests and things like that. And that's, that's going to be a little bit of a different metric than I think what we want to look at, which is community right. uh, types of contributions and stuff. So like there's, the, there are data points that we can pull out of that, but uh, it, it's not necessarily going to be directly in the, the, the metrics panels that are uh, pre-filled for us. So we've asked GitLab about this a couple of times and, you know, they've, um, they, they've sort of accepted some feature requests that would make some of this easier for, on our part, both in the Red Hat namespace and in the, the community namespaces. But um, it's something that we're, one, waiting on GitLab for, and two, you know, just trying to build our, our tools uh, kind of on the side to to see what we can gather out of the APIs instead. Okay. That was going to be my question was uh, how much have we bugged GitLab about it? And the answer is apparently some. Yeah. So when, when we can, we try to work uh, our requests similarly for the community namespaces and the Red Hat namespaces through our uh, 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 account representatives at GitLab. Okay. Um, I'm going to say we're, we can discuss what Z is, but without Sean here, um, I'm not sure how far we'll get. Um, so question would be, we know we go to scale. Will we go to Ohio Linux fast? I'm Sean was at both of those. Carl and I talked about Texas Linux, Linux fest, but I don't think they actually did anything with it this year. Um, open Infra was an opportunity. We kind of did it as I was there. Um, we were listed as a sponsor, but Alma and Rocky did have people there who specifically for there, um, and they had booths. Um, yeah, and I think uh, Troy is supposed to be going to Northwest Linux. Okay. So maybe we see how many conferences we made made it in the I'll say the last year. Um, 
I think anything 2021 might be short. Neil just posted that Texas Linux Fest will be next year. Davida and Neil will be at Linux Fest Northwest too. All right. So the idea being if we can find what our number is and if we can get to like, and again, we need to figure out what Z is, but say two or three more conferences, whether it's board members, community members, Sean is the community architect, but determine, you know, how we can get out there. And I know it's not going to be easy right now, um, but just to be out there and, and talk about the community and getting people involved and um, writing blogs. If anyone's writing blogs about CentOS Stream, please let us know so we can make sure that those are linked and socialed. Um, and I put welcoming potential interns if we can get into outreachy or something, um, whether it is I mean, even with OpenStack, with the outreach, they'll be in different companies. Um, but I think if we can have them working besides contributors, that would be a great way to also get some interaction. Um, I do not know what's going on with Grace Hopper this year. Um, and I don't, while we could definitely introduce people to stream and, and stuff, I don't think our in our onboarding docs are there yet where we could run an all day session. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I would mention is if I'm all for getting interns, but if we get interns, someone has to mentor them. We need to have actual projects for them to do. Like this needs to be structured so that it's actually a pleasant and successful yeah. ideally experience for the intern. And uh, we're not there yet. So yes, I say we probably <laughs> need to do that first and then then we can talk about where to apply interns and stuff. I, I am definitely there with you. We are not ready for interns. Um, we also need to have people care about their contributions to give a positive experience. Yes. Um, and that goes back to the onboarding docs and who's mentoring and, you know, making sure the right people are mentoring, so on and so forth. We are not there yet, but I did think it's a measurement of success that we wanted to list there. Um, and we may break it out of outreach and interactions. Um, so we can't do Zia without knowing the history. And we do not have a number to determine metrics for increased interactions with users to encourage new deployments and learn more about existing ones. And right now, that's going to be hard for us. Not going to lie. Um, so that one is a stretch goal but I, I think once things settle down we will be able to get that done um it may not be in 2023 it may be 2024 but i think we can start working on that um anybody have anything else on defining success criteria Okie dokie, back to the main agenda. Um, this is our favorite time where we go through old issues. All right, so <laughs> in the meeting notes from last week, these, it was mentioned that Secure Boot would be talked about this month. So. Yeah, I've got a couple of updates about that. Um, so there's, uh, we, we've got a little bit of progress that we're seeing. Uh, we know that we need to, um, before we do the, the rates of trust for the SIG membership and all of that stuff, we actually need to get some stuff updated in CentOS Stream itself and then uh, capture and define the, uh, some of the governance for you know, how the, the builds are gonna work and how the keys are stored and uh, sort of describe how that, uh, that process works. I'm in the middle of drafting something right now. Um, I, I, don't have, I didn't have it quite ready for the board yet today, but uh, this will be going out to the, the members of the board as soon as I can get it finished. And uh, as long as you folks approve and, and all of that stuff, we can work it through the process and, um, and uh, kind of go from there. So what we're working on right now is, um, 
getting the the shim packages updated in stream itself we're working with the bootloader team on that uh following that uh we'll do the the governance piece and then we're uh you know basically free to actually start including this in future shim builds so uh this is you know we had some impacts with some folks that uh, uh that left red hat and were working with this beforehand and so we're just about uh tied up with uh you know folks who can help us longer term going forward Okay. So uh, a little bit of progress we're, lo we're looking good. Okay. Uh, just randomly on the side edge, because I've been fighting with hardware tokens lately, you probably also need to update PE sign in Stream 9, as uh, I have difficulty unlocking hardware tokens with PE sign 1 to 15. Yeah. So, and uh, not to get too far into the weeds, but uh, yes, that's some of the, the technical, technical work that we needed to partner with some folks at, on the bootloader team at Red Hat for. So we've got that in mind. Okay, I was making sure you ran into that one because I was fighting with that Monday and Tuesday this week. So it's fresh in my mind. Um, so Brian, I take it that the infrastructure, the HSMs and all that stuff is sorted out now? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're basically working on governance now and uh, I'm trying to describe how that process works. Cool. Thank you. And yeah, I, I'd say as soon as you have even a draft of that document, I think it would be useful to have it somewhere so that we can start reviewing it and providing feedback and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else on Secure Boot? Nice to see progress on this one. Yeah. All right. So these are not in any special order except numerical just like I added everybody's name in alphabetical. Um, 89, public integration testing for stream. This one was randomly selected. Uh, it is not assigned to anyone either. It's been open eight months. Yeah, uh, we talked about this one last month and uh, Brian pointed me towards the T-functional uh, page, but there isn't a lot of documentation floating around there. I, I hate to put it right back on the spot, Brian, but do you have any documentation floating around there? Uh, so the, the, ooh, let me see what we got here. We have accepted, it looks like three contributions already this month, no, two contributions this month. Um, but yeah, so the, the, the team is working on updating some of the tests. I believe this is running for both Stream 8 and Stream 9 at this point. Uh, but again, this is the, the GitLab repo, and then this is the public location where uh, you can see all of this stuff. I know the, the Stream team was working on uh, wiring this up both for composed testing and for um, uh, like individual composed testing and then merge to mirror or uh, push to mirror testing. So there's a, a couple of differences in there, but these are the two links that, that we've been uh, handing out to folks. Contributions go to that GitHub. And then this is the, that second one is our Jenkins instance that handles the composed testing and the gating for the, the mirror infrastructure. Yeah, I, I would say we definitely need documentation for these and ideally either a blog post or something like visible to tell people, hey, these exist. This is why you can contribute tests and all that. So all we're missing on this is documentation? I think so. Uh, I mean, given historical trends, that means we'll get to it in three years. <laughs> I, I joke, but we really do need to fix the documentation problem. Yes, we do. Um, and it's, like I said, it wasn't assigned and I didn't realize this was the, one of the random ones selected for last month either. Um, so my bad on that, but actually kind of good because we should get it assigned to someone and my open ID request keeps getting canceled. So I can't add notes right now. Um, who would be the best person to write said missing documentation?
where would the documentation go? Uh, probably on six.santos.org for now. No, I, I genuinely don't know where, it where, where uh, we would put it. Okay, I'm in. My, my suggestion would be on six.santos.org because that's what we have right now that is not terrible for writing documentation. Um, we do need to figure that out too, of like generally cleaning up the documentation as we discussed at Connect uh, back in Brussels. Um, but I think for the time being, just having something written up and put somewhere would, would be a good start. Well, I've written a test for T-functional before, so I could write something. I just need to know where to put it. I'd be tempted to submit it as a poll to uh, the T-functional uh, repo. Um, I haven't really looked at how great the uh, documentation is, but they've got, they, they point over to the CentOS wiki for covering how to work with T-functional. And uh, our uh, very next ticket below this one is, so the wiki is going away. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Neil, I, t I took that as a, you're willing to write the documentation being that you just did this. I didn't just do it, but I still remember how to do it. It was right. like three years ago in CentOS Stream 8 uh, to fix my frustration with compiler updates being shipped out of order and being completely broken. Um, yeah, and, and the wiki page that Brian linked is probably a good start um, for this as well. Even if it was last updated in 2019, it looks like it covers some of the basics. Yeah, let me add that to the ticket. If you don't want to do the ticket, Neil, just let us know, but... So I was just reading through this page again on the wiki. There's not much that's changed about the contribution process. The um, the execution and the things that we run T-functional on has changed a little bit, but the actual mechanics of writing tests for T-functional hasn't changed much. So I don't know the pits you just talked about. So uh, that I, if I took it, all I would be doing is essentially transcribing what's already here into something else. So that's not. No, that's I mean, not. It's not much. Brian, if there was, well, we have a write up. Um, is there anyone you or can recommend who knows this well enough to make those slight changes, even if they do it in the wiki or in a doc, and then we transcribe it to sig.centos. I'll see if I can find someone. Okay. All right, Neil, you're you're off the hook. We'll give it Ooh, to Brian. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, because if you're not sure those minute changes either, yeah, not really, it's not beneficial to anyone. Yeah, the, the stuff that's on the wiki is the stuff that I know. So okay. the, re the rest of it, I don't know. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything else we can do action-wise on this? It doesn't sound like it. Okay. Our favorite topic, the wiki. Link incoming. Yeah. So as I mentioned the last time for the wiki, um, I think we should phrase it and then scrape it again and put it somewhere. And then we can at least start from like a, start converting documents and putting them somewhere, but at least the existing one is frozen and put somewhere. Because right now it doesn't actually work that well or at all. So it gives the semblance that people can contribute to it. But like we already have an issue that first can't make accounts. It times out every five seconds if you try to actually use it for anything. So it's just a bad user experience. I can't even log into it and I have an account. Every yeah. time I try, it just throws errors. <laughs> um, so I still have all that scraper stuff that I set up. It's not perfect in that, like as we noticed the last time, it doesn't keep all of the history, unfortunately. And um, But we... 
like we still aren't going to lose anything because we can keep a copy of the database and everything. So if in the future we come up with a better way to extract it or scrape it, we can do something else. Or if folks have other suggestions for things to do, I'm all ears, but I just really want this to go away. So at least then we can move on and start doing something with it. Yeah, because we're not going forward. We're just kind of spinning our wheels. Yeah. Um, David, I'm going to assign this to you to do the scraping. Uh, I'm happy to do it, but I need help from Infra because uh, the last time Fabian helped me, but I think he's on vacation now. Uh, yeah. But basically, I need someone to uh, lock edits on the wiki so it doesn't keep changing while we're doing this work and then mirror it again to the to the dev instance that we were using for snapshotting, and then I can run my thing against that. Uh, and there's already a ticket on the infra side uh, on this. Uh, so I think we just need to comment on that and then ask somebody to take that on. What, what does your scraper do? Uh, I'm not familiar with it. It uses something, uh, I, I forgot the name of this, but it uses some open source software that people use for doing archival to effectively wget-r the whole thing in a way that tries to preserve it as much as possible and then uh, puts it in a, in a format that allows it to be replayed easily. Um, I can't put a link in the chat from here, but you can find it on GitLab, uh, like gitlab.com slash my username. It's pretty much the only public repo I have there. Okay. What, when you say replay, do you mean like it reconstructs the history of each wiki page? No. It just gives you a, it gives you a static, like not a static page, but like a um, PWA, one of those single page tab JavaScript application thingies that lets you browse the wiki as if it still existed. Okay. So it, it's not doing anything like converting it to the documentation format that the SIGs dot. No, not at all. That's something that we will still need to do, but yeah. it's at least an easier thing to start from. Okay. Um, let me see. Oh, and we still need. To, so, do we have a decision on what we want to do going forward instead of the wiki? Uh, I believe we agreed to do static sites. Um, okay. But um, I don't think we have agreed on the specifics. All right. I think we're aiming for something like uh, uh, the SIGS documentation. Yeah, because I think, I think in, everyone I think liked in that. general, that's, that's what we were leaning towards because okay. it's been working pretty well for the SIGs as it is now. Yeah. Um, I don't have them on hand, but we had notes from the meeting we had in Brussels where yeah. we went over this in like some amount of detail. And I remember we came up with a proposed structure where we would use like, I think Dobbs or Sentos to work for something and Six to Sentos to work for something else. So like, um, but there's basically, there's three things in play. There's SIG produce content, there's um, the actual REL documentation stuff that the REL docs people make that is available somewhere that can also be used for stream. And then there's this like hodgepodge of like generic CentOS slash CentOS stream documentation that currently lives in the wiki that we need to put somewhere. So um, I forgot what we actually said in Brussels because it's been a while, but I think the idea was to like put a bunch of this stuff on docs.centos.org. Um, and then I, I think at least if we have a place where people can start publishing things, then we can, it's pretty easy to start like converting things or figuring out what's still obsolete, what's still valuable or writing new docs and all of that. But right now we don't really have a structured place. So it's hard to get started. Yeah. I mean, we, we definitely need somewhere where people can start doing documentation, even if it takes us a little longer to get the port over. Um, yeah, because right now I think on Docs Los Santos, there's still some like obsolete. Uh, well, we know the SIG instructions are wrong in one place and more yeah. correct in another yeah, place. Yeah, so Docs Los Santos dot org has this old uh, documentation instance thing that I think we could just nuke and replace with something identical to what we have on Sixtos dot org, and then just build upon that. Okay, that might be a decent working session or working over lunch type thing when we have a couple people together. Yeah. And the more we can keep the process the same between the primary docs and the SIG docs, I think the uh, lower the barrier will be between the two groups. Yeah. Um, well, the RAM docs have their own like 
bespoke process. So that's going to be a separate thing altogether. Yeah, I, I, I would love to get hooked in there, but that's, I, I think they support it in 18 languages and that just becomes a very difficult reconcile at this base level before we start talking about the technical complexities. Um, so that stuff is public because I remember Sean, yeah, it's the enterprise docs under the Red Hat namespace. Um, so that stuff is there as well. I don't think there's an easy way to consume it, though, at least for now. That may be something to follow up with Sean when he's back, because I know he talks to the docs people. OK. And I'm very pleased to see that Sean not long log in on his PTO. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> yet I'm debating whether I'll do it from Dublin next month. Um, but I figure I'll probably be done for the evening anyways. So we have no community architect updates because Sean is on vacation. Yay. Um, we have no SIG reports. So any other business? Neil, did you want to talk the IRC bridges? And then we also have KMOD sources to discuss. Sure. So um, the, the Libera chat folks have announced that they have um, requested Element Matrix services to shut down the automatic portals between IRC and Matrix by the end of this month. This doesn't affect any uh, Matrix rooms that are bridged into IRC, such as the CentOS Hyperscale uh, Matrix room, which is intentionally bridged to IRC. Um, but it does affect every room that doesn't already have a, a Matrix room counterpart. So like, uh, CentOS alt images doesn't have one. The CentOS devil and stream rooms don't, IRC channels don't have one. The meeting channels don't have them. Um, so at the end of the month, um, they will be no longer accessible unless we do something uh, to any person who interacts with IRC via matrix, which among others includes myself and, and, and a few others. Yeah. So the way to fix this is to go ahead and start creating matrix rooms and bridging them all. Uh, we don't have a lot of them uh, to, to do in the first place, but it is something that needs to be done um, uh, by the Fedora home server admin to create all of the rooms if we want them on the Fedora project uh, server like we have for the hyperscale one. Um, if it's going to be on a different server, then whoever wants to do it there can do it. But it probably makes sense to have them all on the center, on the Fedora Project home server. Until we can get our own. Until we yeah, get our own. there was talk before of getting a Sandos one, but the domain is like we need that. We need to take takeover for the domain because it's taken up. So we can't have Sandos.im right now. Right. But it is something that we need to prioritize. And, and as you folks on the CentOS board should talk with Matthew Miller and, and make a request to the, to the folks that are running the, as admins for the Fedora Matrix server to go ahead and, and set them all up in mass and, and get that worked out. Because only the fedoraproject.org matrix server admin can actually create these rooms in that namespace. Okay. Well, and then I think we need somebody on the IRC side to do the, uh, like make the matrix thing, to do the IRC or whatever. Thing. Yeah, so we need, a, we need a delegated IRC op for all the channels. Um, since uh, the guy known as Bah Humbug quit, I don't actually know who is in charge of the rooms anymore. And we need to get that also figured out and, and get everything straightened out for that as well, because we should have ownership of our namespace. Yes. And I'm not entirely sure that we do right now. I think Fabian uh, was, oh, ended up on the list after uh, Bah Humbug moved. But he's on PTO, someone said. We're, we're still working on some of that stuff, but you know, Fabian's in there with, uh, with some of the permissions, but I think we're, um, we're gonna need a discussion about uh, you know, some of the, the IRC operations as they go forward. So I don't know if I can give a good timeline of when that will settle down a little bit, but uh, I know those, those conversations are ongoing. At the very least, we just need someone who can uh, like contact the Libera folks and say, you know, 
we're, we need to be a point of contact added to that list. Uh, and then they can be auto opt throughout all the CentOS namespace channels so that we can do the bridging because that needs to happen by the end of the month, basically. Uh, and it doesn't like, sound like they've been on the back end farm. Why it to be by the end of the month? Because all the portal rooms, which are auto-generated um, matrix gateways to IRC rooms will be shut down at the end of the month. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's by, the auto-generated by... ones are affected. The ones that were manually created are not. So for example, Fedora has all of the rooms bridged naturally, as in they created matrix rooms and then set up an integration to bridge the IRC and matrix rooms together. Those are unaffected by what's happening on July 25th. Um, the ones that are affected are the ones where we just go foo colon libera dot chat in, in a matrix server, in a matrix um, client. Those are affected. All of those name, all those rooms are going away. Okay. Thank you. And I'm sorry for making you repeat yourself. No, it's fine. I, you're asking a clarifying question and this is already confusing enough as it is because plumbed and bridged and whatever are jargony terms that outside of this context make no sense. Um, okay, end of the month means we need to sort this out before Flock. Oh yeah, yeah. actually the actual deadline is July 25th. July 25th, okay. Yeah, so we have not even two weeks to get this sorted out. All right, Sean will be back if I'm reading calendar right. Actually, Fabian should be around tomorrow if I'm reading calendars right. Um, I'm, I'm saying Sean would be the best person to contact libero.chat as an authority to get some people added and get control of the namespace. That's probably correct. Like he's, okay. he's basically the recognized head of uh, the point of contact for the project. Okay. So. We need to talk to Sean on Monday. I know he's going to be overwhelmed with everything. Um, I feel both good and bad for him right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's nothing quite as wonderful as a uh, vacation, except for the cost of coming back to work. Yeah. OK. So Sean. I, I is... feel like I'm remembering Fabian saying something about having admin in most of our rooms. He was, he's supposed like, to have admin. Um, it, it may, if, if the project feels it is important and we are looking at a deadline and we know what kind of resourcing and people challenges we face, plus we have a conference coming up, plus it's Europe summer, which means Europeans love to disappear for a month. It may be worth having someone engage with Fabian in advance of that. And, um, Red Hat has no opinions on plumbing, plums, or anything else, but it, it seems to me that it would be a great opportunity to share a server with Fedora. And um, I, Brian Exelbeard, not Red Hat, have briefly looked at GitHub, and it appears that there are some workarounds to actually get two domains working on one server should we ever acquire the CentOS.im space. Right, so, that's our like, that could right be a long-term solution that would also be beneficial to the projects working together. Um, so for CentOS.im, I had asked Sean about a year ago to see what we could do to get it. But I believe this is something that needs to be done from the right side because it involves lawyers and things. Could we get CentOS project or CentOS stream.im? Uh, we could, but we want a short one because it's okay. Uh, okay, obnoxious, sure. obnoxious otherwise, but yeah, it, it doesn't have to be that one. It was just useful because it had a nice symmetry with the Fedora one. Because Fedora is Fedora. Well, yeah. Okay. And it is our um, framework. But yeah, I, I also that. But yeah, I assume if we wanted, we could use something else as a placeholder and then move to that later. Yeah. Moving okay. users is not easy, but moving rooms is. So that that's important to keep in mind. Um, that's why there are actually two matrix servers in the Fedora setup. There's one that owns fedoraproject.org, and that's where all the official rooms are. And then the users are all on Fedora IM, and unofficial rooms are on Fedora IM and stuff like that. There, that's particulars that are not 
super important for this discussion. But if we wanted to dual domain the main Fedora admin uh, server, then we could also have them add CentOS project there and make sure all the domain, all the rooms that are official, quote unquote, are CentOS project ones. Yeah, because you said that it's their own. So we could do their homes now if we wanted to, because yeah, we have centosproject.org. We just need to yeah. add the DNS records for this. And the, the we have to ask EMS to dual domain the yep. server. Uh, and that, okay. So those are the things that would need to be done for that purpose. Uh, CentOS.im was really for making it so that we could offer people a CentOS affiliated account for users. And so that can be put off for a while. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so I guess when Sean is back, we can have that conversation also with the with the EMS folks and figure that out. Yeah, because I don't know if we can, I mean, assuming I read the calendar right, Fabian is around tomorrow, but I don't think we can get enough traction to do everything tomorrow before he leaves. So I think we're better off, well, we could ask Fabian if he can give someone else IRC ops. I would. So if uh, I would go ahead and wait until Monday and let's involve okay. Sean and I can okay. help, uh, I can help us put in touch with, uh, put ourselves in touch with the other, uh, the other admins on the namespace. Um, cool. Because I, I know there's one other person that, uh, that, that should be available as well. Okay. Neil, can you open up a board issue on this? Yeah, I can do that. And we'll assign it to Sean so we don't forget it and all the details on this. Sure. And I'll put it on my list of things to do on Monday just to give him a heads up and that we do have a deadline. Um, not the best timing being that he's coming back from PTO when we have Connect coming. All right. Um, with that issue being made, do we have anything else we need to discuss here? We have two minutes left. And I know KMod sources is another thing we want to discuss. Oh, yeah. Um, that might take more than two minutes. Does anyone need to leave? Uh, I have to go. Okay. Can someone summarize the KMod thing? Because I just saw the screenshot that we'll share, uh, but I don't I know the specifics. I, I can take a crack at it. Um, prior to the git.centos.org change, the KMod, well, actually, is, uh, is somebody from the on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please speak. You don't have to wait for me. So, so I can explain the issue? Yeah. Yes, please. Please. Uh, so the issue is that now if the source is not available anymore, we might get into legal trouble because a kernel module, the binary might be considered a derived work, yeah. I think it is called. And so the KMOD SIG would be responsible to distribute the source code of the KMOD and the kernel we built for. But we cannot distribute the kernel sources because we don't even have them. But I can build against the kernel because in CBS, there's a, a Red Hat Enterprise Linux target. And we are unsure what to do. Uh, so none of us are lawyers, so I don't think we're qualified to answer the specific legal point. Was this something that like somebody raised uh, to the community? Uh, yeah. Yes. Can we ask somebody that actually is a lawyer to answer here? Because I. Like, I, I might have opinions on this, but I'm reticent to like say something on behalf of the project because none of us are qualified to. <laughs> right, I, I definitely agree we should not be giving legal advice. Um, Peter, I think I think either Brian or, or Pat just did it in the chat as well, uh, suggested emailing the the rosi-program at redhat.com. Um, have you, just out of curiosity, have you done that? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, I'm assuming you haven't got a reply yet, and so no, no, no. Fine. But but Brian told me it might take some time because people are on PTO. So, um, okay. as Neil said in the chat, so the legal issue is just one issue, but there are also some other technical issues we are having with the change. Uh, but that's something I also sent to the same mail address, and they are currently looking into it. If we can find some way, 
Okay. To some of the out, because if we don't find a way, it essentially means that we cannot produce anything anymore for a rail target and just have to focus on stream. Right. Okay. That's. I was just going to ask that question. This is this is constrained just to the rail targets. Yes. Stream. Stream is fine. All good. Okay. Back. So with your red hat hat on, is there anything? In addition, you think Peter needs to do at this time? Uh, I'm sorry to say wait, but wait. Um, there are actually, uh, Peter, I receive copies of all of the email that goes to Rosie as well because I help with that program. Um, and so uh, even though I'm not on PTO, I wasn't trying to ignore your email. I was trying to actually have an answer for you that wasn't please wait. Um, but please wait. I really am checking into some stuff. That's fine for me. All right, then this was the last thing on our agenda, and we are only one minute over. Excellent. So, okay, Davida, when you close the recording, um, let's just figure out where it went, whether it's local or it went into the cloud account. Yeah, I'll, I'll check on the laptop and see if I have it and put it on Dropbox or somewhere. Okay. Thank you everyone for attending. This was actually a really good meeting. Um, for those that will be at flock slash connect, I will see you in like three weeks. Yeah. Right. Take care all. Bye. Bye.